welcome um, everybody uh, back here on uh, Siegel Talks. It's uh, a Monday morning on week 11, a new week of talks with theater artists uh, from around the world we listened to in the time of Corona. And, um, and um, of course, uh, the last week uh, has uh, shaken up everything, changed also the discussion, but still, um, um, you know, it is connected so very, very much in the time um, we do live in. We feel strongly we need to listen to artists. They have been on the right side of uh, history, the struggle and the fight for uh, the complex fight of freedom and liberties. And, uh, and uh, I think they do have things to say. We have to be uh, careful to really uh, take in. We should have listened to them much earlier. That could have saved us perhaps a lot of trouble. And, uh, and today we have with us uh, two uh, theater artists here from, uh, um, from America, from New York, and I'm now in Los Angeles, and uh, I would like to welcome uh, on our program Ngozi uh, Ayanbo and Jonathan McCrory Crory from uh, the National Black Theater uh, here in, in Harlem. Thank you, both of you, for coming. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having Jonathan. us. Jonathan, and uh, what's going on? How do you feel in these days? Um, so what's going on? I mean, I just want to, I just want to say that uh, it's really important to carve out space for um, thoughtful, compassionate dialogue as much as possible and having as much open conversation. So um, I think that hopefully throughout the midst of this um, intersection of dialogue between Nguzi, myself and you, um, we create a space of transparent dialogue that helps to potentially um, create uh, some framing, our hopes to create a pathway. Um, I think that um, I, th I think that when I when I think about what's going on and how I live throughout my days in the era of Corona and also in the wake of the murder of George Floyd in the wake of so many murders um, uh, and just the awakening that's happening in so many different ways or just I won't call it awakening the unveiling because it's always been there um, that's happening mm. in so many different ways I really have to pause um, I take I take I take a lot of confidence in the wisdom that's housed in um, a person that I, I, I really look up to, James Baldwin, um, and looking at how he was a great witnesser and he was a witness through action, um, how he pinned a lot of things that he saw, how he also voiced a lot of the things that he saw. Um, and, and the things that he was able to pin was about a, 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 a offering to the future generations. So I actually asked myself in this moment, what is our offering to the future? Um, what is our offering? I'm wearing a shirt intentionally black to the future because my conversation that I really want to have is how are we instilling the future to have a kind of brighter spot than our present? How are we? And that and that's what I sit with. That's what I'm sitting with on a day to day basis. I call in Guzzi about it. Me and her have FaceTime conversations about it. Of like, of like, what does the future actually look like that is birthed from the love vibration of this present moment? What does this future look like that is not based on shame, that is not based on another name called oppression, that actually creates the most powerful Afrofuturistic mo moment th that we possibly ever can imagine because it's all there. It's all there. It's all been positioned for us to actually be able to do it. So when I think about my day-to-day -day action, it's about deep meditation, deep silence, but also about witnessing from a space of active participating, right? And active participating for me is running the National Black Theater, making sure National Black Theater is fortified and able to withstand this moment, making sure that my colleagues are spiritually, mentally, and even physically fortified and ready for this moment, because our readiness mm -hmm. is going to be the thing that makes sure that the, that, the, that the love note we give to our future generations, the love note that I saw James Baldwin provide for our future generations is something that they can live off of, something that they can say, I'm proud to be a part of, something that they can say that like, they thank you, for tilling the ground, so I could so I could plant new seeds. That's me. That's real, Jonathan. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. That's real. I was I was just been trying to get out of bed in, in the morning. That's 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 been my goal. My goal has been like, well, the world's on fire again. <laughs> what do I do? Um, where's my place? 
Um, am I, am I, am I not doing enough? Should I get out in these streets? Mm. Um, should I take a nap? Should I, should I light some candles? Uh, should mm -hmm. I pray? And I'm not much of a prayer. Mm. Should I write? Am I not doing enough? If I, if I don't write, should I yeah. do something? Should I post something? Should I, um, who do I call? What can I do? Where do I donate? Um, did I not donate enough? Am, am I not doing enough? Is anything enough? Is anything enough? Is anything enough? Um, and that's sort of where I've been in as someone who feels like a sort of very active artist who is always trying to include Black people, make community, um, figure out why it is that I've written this thing and who gets to see it and who gets to share it. And now being in a place where, you know, anything you share, you have to do it from home. Mm. and other people can't be around you when you do it as a theater artist that's like literally the opposite of what I do mm. um and so for you know three months it's been a lot of figuring out um why I do anything mm -hmm. um if I can't do it with other people in the room yeah. and then figuring out how to share that work um with people who are very good at channeling their trauma into action <laughs> mm. um, and deciding if I want to be a part of that and and doing things like 24 hour plays and writing little things and and trying to purge and and get some work done um, in the days that I feel good um, and then obviously with I don't know we can call it the great I felt I feel like it's the great awakening because I, I don't know a movement at least since I've been alive in my 37 years, that's been this global. Yeah. Um, where people around the world are feeling the need to do something um, or say something. Um, and that's probably, you know, with the mixture of unemployment, inequality, because it said that, right? That, that whenever um, other countries are much intense with their protesting than ours, and uh, because you know, they're not content. And they've been taught that if you are not content, a society will revolt. And so with, with these three months of being indoors and people not having money and people not knowing what their future will be when things do open, people have actually had time to sit with their discontent and sit with their dissatisfaction. And it's been a lot to watch. It's been deafening to watch. It's been inspiring. It's also been maddening that people didn't feel like they needed to do anything about it before mm. um and so it's been a lot of just figuring out day by day hour by hour you know there are like great great highs of like okay like yesterday is my first day of protesting i'm like all right well i've been in this house and people are out on these streets and it feels strange to walk to the grocery store and not <laughs> get caught up in a protest like it's like what am i doing yeah, yeah, yeah. I have nothing. It's not like I got to go to work. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. let, let me go to work. <laughs> um, yeah. um, so yesterday That's... was the first day of actually getting out there for hours and channeling some energy. And I don't know that I feel better because um, I might have to go out again because um, it's like the work, you know, the work is here. The work is here to be done. And, and it's an hour, it's an hour, an hour day by day basis of like, do I have the energy and capacity to do it and not making myself feel guilty if I, if I don't have the energy or capacity to do it today or tomorrow or in yeah. an hour. And I just want to uplift that, like that you, 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 you talked about moment to moment, hour to hour, and it's really breath to breath, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's like honoring, it's honoring the simplicity of like, what does my breath want me to do in this moment? And that's why I really mm. appreciate you simplifying my grandeur of language, right? Because <laughs> no, no, honestly, yeah. honestly, because in the next breath, what is my choice? Mm. Next breath, what is my next movement gonna be that honors me? Not this ideology of me, not this mythic notion of me, not this epic space called me, but this simplistic me. The me that has to, has to, has to like put food in my mouth. The me mm -hmm. that has to, that has to watch TV or watch whatever or figure out how do I not or do digest the news. The me that has to, has to participate in society, that breath, that, that next breath is the one that tells me if I actually truly sit with it, that the next breath lets me know how do I want to engage. And I have choice in the matter always. I have choice in the matter of if I want to be in that protest, if I don't want to be in that protest. And then I also have a choice to call that guilt if I do or call mm. that preservation if I do. 
right? Yeah. And like how we yeah. navigate that, especially as black and brown folks sitting in this mm-hmm. body, in this skin, in this age, right? And knowing yeah. what what is being broadcast to us is where we should be. It's also like where what will benefit and serve the, the me that I am, the me that I sit with, who I am, what my politics are, what I will tell, what will what what will actually be meaningful to me, and that simplistic notion of what you just said of like moment to moment, hour to hour, and then I also just want to layer in the idea of the simplicity of the breath to breath, yeah, because because that breath to breath reality is where we're at. There's something shifting and changing with every breath we take. Mm-hmm. Something shifting and changing in every breath that we decide to say, I will, because in that same breath that you said you wanted to protest, in that same breath, you also have the right to say, I'm not gonna protest anymore. Yeah. And, and in that same breath, of- in some way, things are not going to be the same. If you're in tune with your body, if you're in tune with what's happening, if you're in tune, there's just been a deep sense of, uh, you know, and I joke about the existential crisis, but it's true. There's just been a deep sense of what is this all for? What is it? What's the point? What, what exactly? Uh, and 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 there are some people who are realizing that at the moment they they have been living without purpose at the moment mm. they have not been in tune with a lot of people in the moment mm. they've actually not they've been in tune with only themselves mm. um, and that it, actually we are all global figures we are all connected um that i i can't walk out the door now without thinking about this uh, these other people who have been killed and this is what people have always been thinking of right i can't walk out the door now without thinking about these black and brown bodies that have been ki- killed also during the coronavirus like like yes. there are uh, the disproportionate killings of of our they look like us right of those bodies that were stacked up in new york like so so there are just many you know, people are waking up to the fact that they have been living for themselves when it is not just about them. And then it goes back uh, to the very notion of then what does the future look like? So what right, and what is their responsibility to that and, and to the to that future and to the world? And that is a really overwhelming awakening. That is really a sh- like that is that is a shift. That is a difficult that is a difficult way to now walk through the world when you have really just been walking through this world for yourself. And now you're gonna have to really constantly think about how does what I do affect others, right? Mm-hmm. If you before you can't go out without a mask, right? Because so people will not let you in their stores without masks. And there are some people who are ignoring that, but there's some people who, you know, they're opening up by city next week. And there are some people who are like, uh, and for me, I'm like, mm, I will probably still be staying indoors most of the time. You know, um, because I have to think about how my actions affect other people. Yeah. And some people have always walked through that world and some people have walked through it kind of, and it's just gonna be, and, and, and we're not out of the woods yet, you know? Um, and there's also just an accountability thing we're happening that happens with social media, that happens with that and, and a policing of each other for better mm-hmm. or worse. Right, mm. a, we're we're making other people accountable for their past actions mm. in, in all in, since for the since the Me Too movement, right? And so now we we're having a Me Too movement in racism, right? Yeah. And and that is just that is just that can't be ignored. I don't know that they're devoid from each other because there's also a racial disparity with with the coronavirus. Yes. So so because they're just glaring racial disparities, I don't know that. The, the you know the murder of George Floyd and Ahmad and continuous other black bodies. I don't know that we can separate those things. And I also think I also just want to say that uh, it is America coming into connection with. I was talking to Shade Lithcott, mm-hmm. CEO of MBT. Um, it's America coming into relationship to one of its original sins. It was founded mm-hmm. off of this notion of oppression. It was founded off yes, off of liberation and off of rebellion. But when they pinned the Constitution, they pinned slavery into its fabric. Right. They then the great American experiment began to have a conversation about um, this 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 very wily, um, very um, now inhumane as we see it now. It wasn't humane then, but we now we know it as inhumane called slavery. They 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 kind of and ever since then we've done amendments. We have done um, different kinds of documents to try to adjust that experiment to come into more relationship to the humane and, and human vibration that we wanted to be in and we wanted to live in. 
Um, however, this moment is the collision. It's one of those collision moments, similar to that Me Too moment, collision moments of saying that original, that original document that, that forged what this experiment would look like, um, it had flaws in it. The roots of it were not baked in some kind of true authentic expression. Um, and so therefore, we need to rectify and we need to actually kind of like if you were to garden, we need to, we need to excavate those rotten roots um, and start to figure out how do we restore the wealth or the, or the beauty or the abundance so that this thing can flourish properly. Um, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and it's just quite, it's quite, it's quite, um, it's quite profound. That's why for me, when you ask mm. me what I've been doing, I say I've been in pause and I've been in witness. I've been trying to really listen because if because when I think of when I think of when shifts truly sometimes happen, um, they happen when for me they happen when I stand still and I don't come from the space in which I was programmed. I come mm. from the space of which in which I have a conversation with the with my fear with my discomfort. Where if I was to move if I was to go and they, they there's this, like all these famous quotes saying where I was most uncomfortable is where I should actually move forward like you know what I mean like like the sentimentality of that and that's kind of what pe folks should be doing right now in my personal opinion what what I'm seeking to do for myself right now is like if I'm uncomfortable around the 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 silence of this moment in my personal life am I uncomfortable by the by by the by the by by the actions of this moment that actually provides the opportunity for my most for my for my growth to happen that like like I moved in the midst of corona that was uncomfortable but that move also rooted me in my growth that, that uncomfortable ability of having to move in the midst of a pandemic and the midst of a shutdown. And for the reasons which I was, I was moving because I was a product of a hate crime. So mm -hmm. all of those various different things what were happened? really uncomfortable. Hate, what hate crime? Um, it was my, my neighbor uh, for six months had been harassing me on the week after the quarantine in New York City. He stalked me for five blocks um, and he was trying to beat me up. Um, I had to, in the police, but throughout all of it, I had the slogan, the only thing that would come up of is that I can only save me, that the police weren't willing to do anything about it until he had actually um, physically touched me. Um, he had to physically do something to me verbally and chasing me. And because there were no physical scars around it, then they were, I was being told at that moment, could be totally different, but at that moment I was told that that was not um, liable enough to actually cause charges. Um, and throughout all of this is through Corona and through the quarantine and through the shutdown of New York City, I had to figure out how to save myself. And in saving myself, I had mm. to live in the discomfort of what are the tools that are necessary for my own salvation. And inside of those tools of salvation were for me was to move. And to and in moving in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of all of that, and for the reasons why, created a mechanism for my growth. Living in a new space where I feel more rooted in myself than I did before, hmm. getting access to therapy, which is a deeply needed, necessary tool for myself in this moment of a processing the hate crime, but also processing what this moment is. Yeah. Um, the tools of psychological well-being, the tools for emotional well-being, the tools for physical well-being, and, the, and all of those vortexes, all of those needed tools are, are, are things that I were on the precipice of wanting to grasp at, but I wasn't leaning into because I wasn't, I didn't want to allow myself to be um, in the space of discomfort. Part of that being that it costs a lot of money to have a therapist. I didn't want to have to pay for it. It can cost a lot of money to move in New York City. I didn't want to have to pay, for, like all of that yeah. discomfort, not wanting to be discomforted because I was comfortable in where I was. And where I was wasn't healthy for where I needed to be. I'm so sorry to hear that you're, that you're in the middle of all of this, you're really a victim of a hate crime with a neighbor who, um, who harassed you, I, I think. So, um, so you moved. So I moved, I moved. And what I just wanna, I just wanna, I, I, I thank you for, thank you for your condolences. Um, mm -hmm. What I just wanna oh. say is that, is that I might be a victim, but I don't wanna live in victimhood. Mm -hmm. And what I have the opportunity to, when the only reason why I bring it, I bring it up because I, I am blessed to have the skill sets and the tools and the resources, A, to move out of the situation where harm was, 
um, but also be given the resources to be able to um, grow from that moment um, and take, again, the learnings, not the trauma, learning how, how to let the trauma go, but the learnings from that moment to move me forward. And I, and I voice that only because there is a trauma that's laden inside of this current circumstance that we are now experiencing. There was a trauma laden for Black and Brown folks, Corona by itself. There was a trauma mm -hmm. already there with the amount mm -hmm. of people that were being that were being killed, that were being murdered, the amount of people that were dying from this virus, right? And then on top of that, now you have systemic a systemic issue flaring itself up, which is the killing of black and brown folks by cops and also by former cops, right? And all of those different systemic issues on top of that creates another layer of assault, attack, and not feeling loved or being taken care of or not feeling safe. Walking down the street, not knowing if when you hear a siren, who that siren is for, what that mm -hmm. siren will entail. When I go to sleep, I hear tons of sirens being in Harlem. What does that, what do those sirens mean? Who are those sirens for? Who is in that ambulance? Who is in, who is that, who is that cop going for? Mm. There's a latent trauma, there's a latent uh, potentiality, high potentiality of trauma baked into what is happening in the situation. And I just invite everyone actually, black, brown, whoever, however you might identify, I invite everyone to go on a journey to figure out as Sade, as Sade gave me a quote of her mom's, Dr. Barbara Antier, where there is love, there is no fear. Going to a love affair with yourself as much as possible that you possibly can imagine, something else that she would say, Dr. Tier would say, going into a love affair with yourself as much as possible so that you can figure out ways and mechanisms to cancel out the, 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 the very palpable relationship that we could have with being fearful in this moment. And fear does have Sometimes it's great perspective, but also it can, it traps, it consumes, it, it locks. I don't know if you have anything to add to Guzzi, but. Oh, okay, so I never know, it was like, back and forth. Oh no, you just uh, always just jump in. No, just jump in, just okay, cut me okay, off. Cool. Okay, no, it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's really beautiful what you're saying, the idea of like inviting everyone to and fall, like fall in love with themselves again, quite frankly, and, and inviting everyone to examine, <laughs> examine what's going on with themselves. Because with all the work that people are doing, which I commend, um, it's also, there just needs to be some reckoning. There needs mm -hmm. to be some real reckoning with how, you know, you walk through the world. Yeah. And it's, it's true. It's like, how can you be a war for other people when when you haven't yet taken the time to take inventory with, you know, what love it is that you're trying to spread, right? Or take an inventory with what you haven't spread out into the world, right? Take an inventory with what you haven't been doing. And now all of a sudden you want to be a warrior. And, but it's like, but what, in what ways do you need to um, hold yourself accountable? You know, um, it's easy for us to police other people, but yes. it's like, what, in what ways are we reckoning with maybe our past sins, right? Yeah. And the past trauma that we have inflicted upon other people. Yes. Um, and I'm not saying we're all imperfect human beings and we're all not saintly, but I, I, I do want to sort of like, I do want to, you know, like you're saying, challenge us to really just hold it, ourselves accountable for what kind of citizens we've been. Mm. <laughs> you know, what kind of human beings we've been to each other, you know? Um, and. And, mm. and how are we treating, and also how are we treating ourselves? That's you know, hard. if you're treating yourself like a workhorse, of <laughs> course we're going to go, seriously, if you're treating yourself like a work, workhorse, of course you're now going to be like, how dare you relax? How dare you walk by? How dare you enjoy the day? How dare you, you know, you should be doing this. And it's like, relax, my dude, you know? And, uh, you know, and it's like, oh, well, perhaps if we took some time to relax, be quiet, mm. sit in the dark with who, our thoughts and who we are, we would understand that other people are also like traumatized and unable to function and unable to to know how to help or what to help, you know, um, and what way to help. So, I, yeah, I just think that that idea of, but that all comes from a place of self-examination. Mm. That all comes from a place of learning how to be still, mm. um, which is not my forte, <laughs> you know, but or it mine. is something that I'm- you, you and I are both just like, let's yeah, go. Yeah, well, you know. Um, but it's something that I'm working on and learning how to be so that I can yes. really sort of be the best citizen that I can be and the best artistic 
uh, citizen for, you know, my fellow artists who I know, who I can feel, you know, are suffering and they don't know what to do. They have to do something. And, and I commend those people who, who know what to do and can do because this is how they've always thrived. But I also want to, I want to challenge that thing of why do you have to do anything at this moment? Yeah. Because there also feels like this pressing worry that people will stop caring, mm -hmm. which is also just, um, which is valid, but it is a, which is an absolute valid worry because the way that new cycles and things move so quickly, it's really easy to feel like Black Lives Matter is just a moment. It's just a moment. Though it is our way of life, right? Yeah. But it, if it is truly your way of life, then it's like, you don't need to worry about that and you can take care of yourself and then you can keep pressing on and you can keep fighting. Um, but I think the thing that I'm finding to be the most poignant is the, is the, is the fervent, we have to do something now, even yeah. though I don't know what that is. And I'm like, do you understand the contradictory of those two sentences? Yes. If you don't know what that is, then why do you have to do something now? And if you do know what that is, by all means, go. <laughs> what can I do to help you with that, right? What can I do to help you? If you know what that, you know what to do, what can I do to help you? But if you don't know, and I don't know, can I take this nap? <laughs> yeah, can, I, can, I, can I go to sleep? <laughs> can I take this nap and recharge? And then maybe we'll figure out something tomorrow. No, it has to happen now because no because this is because you know? because the question the question that, that you really brought up yeah. so beautifully yeah. and eloquently is a i love this idea of how am i the best citizen how am i how 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 am, how am i embodying being the best global citizen and artistic yeah. citizen for myself and the people that i love like i mm -hmm. love that i i love I'm, and that i'm really going to walk away with that and i appreciate thank you for that offering um okay. but and you also you also brought up this very real thing that Chade and I always think about at MBT because we say we're turtles like we're the turtles <laughs> inside of the race not the hares it is a marathon that like that like that like the notion this is this is a catalytic moment yes but it's a catalytic moment inside of a marathon inside of a pantheon of mo other catalytic moments and that there will be another stint to this conversation after this mm -hmm. moment and it's a continuation. It's actually a part of a larger continuum that it's not yeah. the start of, it's not the, it's not, it's not, it's not the, it's not the end of, it's not mm. it's a continuation. As long as there is black and brown bodies on this planet, as long as there's breath coming out of black and brown bodies on this planet, the very nature of, 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 of having to proclaim Black Lives Matter will always be a part of the conversation. And mm -hmm. as long as a constitution that was forged under a premise of white supremacy stands, which it, who mm. knows, it might stand forever. It might stand, you know what I mean? As long mm. as that premise stands, there will always be a need to, uh, for each of us individually to mm. have an assessment of how am I creating a space for black lives to truly matter? That is for Jonathan to ask as a black man, to ask how am I making sure that all black lives, not just black male lives, how am I making sure that black women's lives, black trans lives, Black, how am I making sure that black, black disabled lives, black deaf lives, how am I making sure that the lives that I am not necessarily remotely connected to, mm -hmm. how am I making sure that those lives matter? And if I'm not doing the work to address that question, then I'm not being the proper citizen. I am really trying to make sure I, ra I, ra I rally up this moment to draw flames and to capitalize off of some trauma and pain. Because mm. that's how I have felt. And I don't know if that's the best route or best use of our energy in this moment in time. Mm. That if we speak from our trauma and pain yet again, what are we creating? Yeah. And that's just if what we I glorify mean. that, what are we creating? If, if we, we if we that. if we make that the main narrative, that's I mean, that's the thing that I I'm not, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm struggling with it. It's just the thing that I'm thinking about Yes. Right? as an artist. It's like, well, then what kind of, you know, as an artist, as a maker of things, what kind of art comes out of this, mm. right? And, and what kind of art sh is shared out of this? And, and all of it is valid if it is black art, right? And, but I, 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 
that idea, right, that we talked about in the beginning of dreaming into the future, right? Dreaming <laughs> what is, what is you know, best possible worlds, you know? Um, <laughs> is it, you know, like, you know, dreaming our Black lives into the future, right? What does it look like? What does it look like? You know, Minneapolis, like reading that Minneapolis is, is making a pledge to defund their police. Police. That is something I not I could have not dreamed. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that lens, right? Someone has that lens, and so if and and, and how can I contribute action, to that lens? Also, how it's can like, I contribute to that lens? Yes, yes, yes right. Yes. Like, what yes, can yes, I yes. write or make? Yes, yes, yes. That 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 is not unrealistic. That is not and maybe utopic. Whatever is utopic now. No, utopic is no longer unrealistic, right? Yes, because. I never imagined that. And like, what can we imagine into the future? And like, what kind of black art that, mm. what, is it, what, is that, what does that look like, right? What does it look like if all of our, black, like, and what does trauma look like if, what, what, you know, how do, I don't know how to describe what I'm trying to say. It's just, what, is, what does trauma look like in the future? Like, if we mm. keep repeating, mm. you know what I mean? Like, what trauma can we actually now get to? Yes. Right. What can we actually now examine? What other, what other systems can we now examine, of of, of blackness? Right. Like, what other things can we can we can we examine the mundane in blackness? Yes. Can we examine? Can we talk about? Can we have plays? Will plays be about therapy? Will plays be about mm. healing? Will plays be a you know like what other what other things can we get to, besides? overt violence and what other ways can we talk about violence you know um so that we can get to our healing you know yeah. can we what are the diverse ways in which we can talk about our bodies I, i'm i'm interested in yeah i'm just interested in the art that will be created and in what way it will be created especially with at the moment there being no theater right yeah, yeah, will there yeah, be yeah. more uh, will there be more performance art Right? Will there be more outside performance art? Will like you know? Will there be more galleries? Will there be more concerts? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Will there be more you know spontaneous poetry? You know, like it, you know, will there be? In what ways will, you know, when we can reconvene? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even mean theater. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, is yeah, theater, yeah. Is theater yeah. not in our? You yes. know, is theater it, because theater or what we know as theater cannot convene for what looks like almost a year. You know, yeah. will theater catch up? By the time theater can convene, what will it be? And if theater can't convene in a year, what does performance look like? What does outside performance look like? What does what does live performance look like? And, and that's and then on really, top of that, no, and then on top of that, I mean, this is why I love you. On top of that, it's just it's just a lot. It's it's also it's also a conversation of like, will we allow as the quote unquote guard, will we allow for that innovation to show up? Like, like that's really what the pause needs to be. Will you allow mm -hmm. innovation to show up that actually might X you out of the conversation? Mm -hmm. That, that allows you have to maybe you producerally stand back and go, well, I don't know how to do this because we don't usually do this. Or and I'm willing and I'm willing to fund and I'm willing to fund these people to right. now be able to do it. Do it. And, and also, I'm willing not to be imperialistic about it and figure out how do I get 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 compassionate about it like like what does compassionate leadership look like now and in the future and what i love about what you just said is just like it's just like you talked about like i couldn't imagine i couldn't imagine that especially after this i couldn't imagine minnesota like i couldn't imagine that but at the same time the fact that there that that, mean, that means there's an energy out there that we all can mm -hmm. tap into that can imagine a future that that could allow for breath to show up that could allow for for relief to show up that could allow. And then the next step of that conversation of once that is cast into the universe is about accountability. How do we make sure that it's a, once we cast it, once we cast what that future looks like, we have the opportunity to cast it in whatever color, whatever shape, whatever wisdom that we have inside of us, we get to manifest. Like I always say, I'm at my best when I'm completing the sentence and the unfinished work of my ancestors. When I get the privilege to complete the unfinished work that they tilled for, I'm at my best. I'm doing, I, 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 I'm in my flow, right? And so, but then what, is, what does it look like to be held accountable to that, to that connectivity? How Can do I you ask you, Jonathan? Yeah. 
in what ways in this present moment are you, you know, because as a, as someone who's you know an artistic director of a theater, it, it, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but I mean you you know you're a leader. No, go you're, ahead, you're, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, yes. In what ways are you holding yourself accountable for past transgressions, right? Like, in what way? Are you holding? Are you holding space for those artists? Are you just going? Okay, we'll just keep it moving, and I and I'm I'm keeping myself accountable for in what in one in a way that I did not successfully show up for that artist or artiste or whatever. Like, in what way are you holding yourself accountable as a leader? In the so I'm asking. Thank you for that question. I'm asking. I'm Sade and I and the rest of the staff of MBT and in the ways in which that uh, we operate. We operate in a very much in a in a. I kind of I would say indigenous practice model where it's co-leadership and it's a, mm -hmm. and, a, and it's a communal leadership, not so much a hierarchical leadership. But I yeah. will say the way in which that we are seeking um, to hold ourselves accountable is that we are trying and seeking to, especially like we did this program and it opened up my eyes. I never saw it before. Um, to disabled and deaf community, we did a panel mm -hmm. and we had ASL interpreters, and I just realized. I've caused violence by not ever having that before. I caused division in my programming by never having captions or never having ASL interpreter. There's a there's a huge element of my community that will that has not had access to our conversations, to what we do because we did not provide that resource. So moving forward, I'm I'm seeking to figure out what does it mean to stretch in that way, right? What does it mean to stretch in that way? How to hold how to hold us accountable to having in every digital program we have moving forward, we have someone of AS who's able to be interpreter of the content, right? How do I how do I fund for that? Because that's money that has to be made. Mm. I also ask myself in what ways, like in what ways, what I, I ask myself this in everything that I do of like, where are my, I called them, it's a wrong term. I don't mean where, uh, yeah, where are my holes? The term I was gonna use was gonna be not right. Where are the holes that I've had in my curation and my programming? Who have I not served? Who am I, who do I feel comfortable serving? Um, mm -hmm. I could be transparent and then simple fact that I have a huge affinity for working with black women, women in general. I work with a lot of women. I'm, I have a lot of women friends. It's kind of easy, right? The challenge for me is working with black men. And I've had to be like, why? As the same gender loving gay black man, like why? Like what way, in what ways, why do I have that conversation? What is about that? And for me, I've had to be intentional sometimes about saying, I'm gonna make sure that black men get this opportunity. I'm gonna be intentional about making sure of looking at my curatorial style. And again, I have holes, I am human, I've faltered mm -hmm. in this. But I've tried to make sure that when I look at the pantheon of my curatorial style and where I've given opportunities that I say, okay, let me sit back and say, where, what, how, what's my pattern? I ask myself what my pattern is. And I think a lot of people might not ask themselves that, but that's what I do. I really try to sit with what's my pattern. And I surround myself with people who call me on my bullshit, like you. Like you call me out my bullshit. Sorry for that. Yeah. But you call me out. You'll be like, bruh, 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 bruh. I hear you. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. That's great. Uh -huh. Chee, chee, chee. But let's be honest. Let's be honest. If you actually were to sit with this, they actually have the, they have the right to be this angry. They have the right to feel like this. And I appreciate surrounding myself with people who antagonize me, who frustrate me, actually. Mm -hmm. Because through that friction creates diamonds. And if I didn't do anything, and you were there when I first said yes to National Black Theater, I don't do anything right at MBT. I have helped to, I have helped to polish a diamond. Mm. I've helped to crystallize. I've helped to form. I've helped to be in conversation with the illumination of a diamond, so that we, I, you, me, the future has an inheritance. How is your theater doing at the moment? Tell us a little bit of the situation. Um. <laughs> How's the theater going? I mean, the theater, the, the, the theater's going, I would say, I, I would say we're in a space of deep innovation. We're in a space of really assessing and looking at, and like, yes, are we in, are we, are, are we in need of resources? Yes. Are we in need of um, financial resources? Let me be very clear. Are we in need of financial resources? Yes. Are we in need of, of capacity building resources? Yes. Um, are we, are, are we poised to have all of that matriculate and, and, and come our way? Yes. Like, like for me, for me, we are, we, Shade and I, Shade and I would say sometimes, because we were on a path um, of producing nonstop all the way up until now. 
every other month doing two to three things and then being on a- How many openings do you have a year and how big is your staff? How, wait, say it again. Say how, it many again. Opening, how, many how many shows do you do a year and how big is yeah. your staff? So, so- um, Where do you show? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so from so from February to June, we were planning to put on about six or seven events, two, three productions. A part of that, one was a world premiere of a show called Skin Folk that we partnered with Bushwick Star. Another one was a world premiere of a show that we were partnering with the Repertory Theater, St. Louis Repertory Theater, um, down in um, St. Louis, called Dreaming Zenzale. Um, another one. It was another. It was it was another production. Oh. I was, I was in, um, we were in conversation with NYU and we were actually were mounting two shows at NYU, Death of the Last Black Man and, um, and Funny House of a Negro. Then we had a partnership we were doing with Park, Park Avenue Armory and Guzzi was a part of it called 100 Years, 100 Women. We also had another partnership with the Schomburg Center. It was, um, we were looking at Afrofuturism as a gateway, gateway Afrofuturism. Then we had another partnership with New York Public Library, New, New York um, Performance Library and with um, Carnegie Hall called um, called Can Enable, The Resilience of the Lit Gift. Um, so it was a litany and we were in production at the moment of shutdown with a show called Bayano. And then we were going to be in a workshop production for another show that we commissioned called Retreat. And then we had a, and then our, our, re, our producer in residence was going to have her show, uh, their show, TS, their show um, was going to, a one day event was going to happen in June. So we were basically on a track of show, 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 execute, 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 execute. It was a race. It was, it was, it was, it was a merit. It was, it was a, it was almost like a, although it was beneficial, it was going to feed us. It was going to be beautiful for our community. It was not getting to the grit and bones um, of where we as an institution needed to, needed to focus because we're getting ready for a redevelopment of our property. We're getting ready for a reimagining of our space. We're getting ready for an, uh, uh, an evolution of the concept of our founder, Dr. Barbara Antier Forge. Um, and so, and so this pause was the best gift to allow for us to pivot, um, pivot our inner, our energy towards the fundamental and the foundational premises of the National Black Theater and making sure that we are building it for MBT 2.0. Um, what does it mean to build for the future, as I've been saying? And this moment has allowed us, as much of it's been a pause that's, that's like, what am I doing? How am I navigating? As you said so beautifully in Guzzi, um, a pause of like, am I doing enough? Um, that pause has allowed for Sade and I as leadership with our, with our team and with our staff um, to be able to now have a conversation about um, what does it mean to be a cultural destination um, for Black theater in the nation, in the world? What does it mean to be that destination on a national level? Um, and that's been that that that's really where we sit, where we are, and what we've been doing. Did that answer your question, also, Ngozi, around accountability? I was going to actually dig deeper on that. Oh, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, because that, that is a that's that's beautiful. Um, but but I was I was directly in this age now that I feel like is the accountability age, right? I was directly asking as far as how is it that we are holding ourselves to stay accountable, or how are you are to from for past artists that you like specifically looking at the artists that you've worked with? No, seriously, like yeah. you know, like in what way? Are you like, oh, that fell short, or oh, oh, that was whatever, or oh, that was not great practice. That actually, you know, like, you know, that that's sort of what I was, you know, in this, in this, yeah. I only ask because I feel like I've been approached in a lot of ways in the way that artists are now. We are now holding our our world, our microcosm, our theater accountable for for their past, right? Yeah. The way that we want America to be held to their yes. past. Um, and so that's, that's, I'm sort of more thinking more so as far as that goes. So yeah. I, I can't stand here and say, I've never done, um, something that has not triggered been, a, been erroneous or been, um, hurtful to another black artist. I can't sit here and say that I've sat on this pedestal and been pure in all my acts. What I can say is that when the actions have happened, what I have tried to seek to do, and mm -hmm. I'm not perfect in my healing in that also, I've tried to address mm -hmm. it. Um, I try to create a space for dialogue. Um, I try to create a space for my learning, for my own learning, and I try to create a space for um, for 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 me um, to really start to um, live by the values in which I 
signed on for National Black Theater, which was about healing, about community organizing, and about um, really pivoting the, mo the modality of access for Black artists. Mm. Um, and I'll say those are the three things that I really stand behind for MBT, and I hope that I help to illuminate, and I hope to, I hope to, I hope to really create the community by. When I have done acts that I can hold and say that um, I try to create the olive tree branch as much as possible. Um, mm. That might look like me um, sending an email saying, "Can we find some time to talk?" Um, that might look like uh, me um, me wanting me really taking a 100% ownership of where I've done something wrong and me actually expressing this is where my side of it is and mm. this is what it means from my side. Sometimes people don't want to hear the other side. Sometimes people just want me to feel bad. I am not going to, I'm human. I am not going to sit here and allow for someone to degrade the kind of labor that I have tilled. That's just, that's just that, and that might be, that might come across wrong, but like, mm. but like there is, there, there is no one knows the crown in which I hold. Like, I don't know someone else's crown. And if we do are not, if we're, if, if someone is able to approach one another from a space of compassion and say that I understand that I did something that was a fault inside of this, uh, this continuum of this relationship of like, you trusted me to hold up your work. And I tried in this moment from the vantage point that I have, I think everyone has an element of blinders mm -hmm. and it only, and it takes, it takes compassion, true compassion. And this is where I'm talking about intimacy, true compassion to help to awaken someone, someone's holes to help them like, like a horse, help them to be able mm -hmm. to see wider once again, instead of seeing narrow. We are conditioned to see narrow on so many different yeah. aspects. Um, and so what I, to answer your question, I try to communicate to the individual. I try to, I try to, um, I try to address it in my next proceeding. So I try to like, I rally, I rally around people that I trust and I tell them the situation, I ask for counsel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I seek to, I seek to, in, a, in addition to that, um, I invite the individual, hopefully, into a conversation about it. And maybe, and maybe and if someone doesn't feel like I've done that, please reach out to me. And I would invite you to do it individually and not try to do it out there in the public like that, because um, I invite you to have a one-on-one -on -one connection with me. I, I, I welcome that. Um, uh, I think that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not perfect at it, and I'm going to grow mm -hmm. at it. And will, I will also fail at it. Yeah. For both of you as a question, will it be different coming out of this? And do you think what got you into theater, your beliefs and why you prove performances, will it be different? Will, will something change? Will you do different work in theater? So um, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and Gazi. Go. Um, it's interesting. I think why I got into theater shifted some time ago. Once, once, once the theater actually I made actually started getting made, you know what I mean? It shifted as far as like, well, what do I want to do once now that I'm here? What is it that I'm actually doing? Because a lot of times uh, playwrights and theater artists who are makers are making things into a void. Hmm. Um, but once I self-produced and was like, oh, people come. If I, if I build it, people do come. Yeah, well, yeah, what yeah. do I want them to leave with? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's always been a constant. That's that hasn't changed. Um, but I think the question of what do I want them to leave with has changed. Um, and I'm not sure yet. Mm. Now, um, I'm not sure anymore. You know what I want them to leave with, or if they will, or if I can get them to leave with, or if I can get them to come. Um, but for me, it has been a big it just it's it's more of a zeroing in and being specific about does this heal does this provide the beginning to heal right does does will people leave this sometimes it's like with a smile on their face or what, not just with a, like a, a thought but like will they really will this stay with them for days in a way that will help them I say you know, that will crack them open, I but, um, and not just crack them open in that, you know, they're gonna be incapacitated for a couple of days, but maybe, you know, and in what other ways can I um, protect them? You know, I if say. the play cracks them open, then what's the programming in talkbacks 
that I, I, I mean, I literally have been looking at this whole time and being like, you know, I, you know, me and Jonathan joke about this. I say, man, if people don't need, need your unifying breaths right now, like the way people used to joke, like Jonathan does this thing at the end of every single show. If you stay for a talk back, they do a talk back after every single show. Um, and he does a thing called the unifying breath. And I know we used to joke about that, but I'm like, yo, if people don't need a unifying breath after now, I don't know what they need. And so the idea from like, what I'm constantly thinking about now is, oh yeah, like how can I really filter discussion around the play? Say. You know what I mean? And healing around the play. If it is a, if it is a heart opener, you know, some people are not prepared to have their hearts open. Some people are just uh -huh. prepared to sit and watch. And the more I do work and the more that I sort of realize that that is actually what I'm forcing people to do, uh -huh. the more I'm like, well, what can I do for the people who aren't prepared for that? Uh -huh. For the person who sits in their seats for 20 minutes and they don't know what to do after they've just cried for an hour and a half. Uh -huh. You know, what can I what can I do for them if I'm just a playwright? And what kind of, you know, so for me, it's like, how can I more holistically think about what we're doing, realizing that I'm not okay, right? And that we're all actually just not okay. Yeah. And so like, what can I do now with the things that I, that I make to make us okay, you know? And like, and, and, and how can I attack that on all sides? Not just with writing a play. I will say, uh, A, uplift, love my sister, uplift. Um, uh, I will say from my vantage point, in addition to what Ngozi said, um, it, I started, um, I, I made a, a deliberate choice to invest and be a participant and be a family member of National Black Theater, um, which, has, which was to create a home, create a home for Black artists. Um, I felt like when I left NYU, I didn't have a home. And um, this moment uh, has only deepened that battle cry that I had, or that summoning or that calling that I had uh, leaned into when I initially said yes to partnering with Sade Lithcott at National Black Theater to help uplift Dr. Barbara Antier's vision um, with the rest of the staff at MBT. So, so, so for me, so for me, um, I am, I am really, I, I, I am really clear that in this moment, I have to deepen my, my blinders. Like I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to deepen where my blinders are so that I can actually expand my POV and actually hold more space. I now have to learn how to hold more space. Um, if I didn't think I had, I, if I didn't think I needed to, I have to do it now. I have to hold more and more space because the thing to what Ngozi is saying that's so true is that it's also, it's the, it's the content, but it's also the experience itself is going to radically shift, shape, shift, and move people in a different way. The very notion of when we're able to be back in a so quote unquote theatrical space is going to be a unnerving sensibility because we are going to be connected to each other in an enclosed space for a durational period of time. And we have been told that that's a deadly act. So the people who want to do that, they are courageous up to the wazoo, especially when we first start doing this thing, even when there's a vaccine, that's a courageous act. And so the notion of the people who hold space like National Black Theater, who occupy and produce the space, we have to be able and prepared to hold the grief, the joy, the exhilaration, the frustration, the sadness, the, 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 the spectrum of emotion that will bubble up to the surface that really has nothing to do with what's happening on the stage, actually. It has everything to do with what's happening with them individually because they haven't been that close in proximity to another individual in such an in a closed space that they don't know. That they haven't, that they haven't, that they haven't vetted, that they haven't, that they don't know where the last person that they talked to or the last place that they ate or that, 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 that they don't know. They don't know any of that. They trust. Now, now the space has radical trust in laden inside of it that it didn't necessarily have before. It has a radical trust. They have to trust that the performers are, have been well taken care of and that they are not bringing the, uh, bring, bringing, bringing a harmful agent inside the room. And you have to trust that the community that's come together is not bringing a harmful agent inside the room either. Mm -hmm. and that is, a, and that's a new president. That's a new kind of model that we have never had to really think about before, in a, in a real, real conscious way. It's interesting, you know, to say to something what we have thought about in a conscious way, and now it's a really a time to 
to to think well maybe we should be doing what what we've been thinking about if we don't do it now whenever do you think also possibly that the forms let's say traditionally we have the play but there's also site specific work monologues there are radio plays um uh, we hear from uh, from indonesia they audience members they commission plays uh people send out you building boxes of puppets and then they write together. There is a, in France, um, um, actors uh, for at the Théâtre de la Ville, actors uh, on the telephone, people call them up, tell them their life and their, what they think about and they create a monologue for them or a poetry, uh, they, they, we give them a poem to think about. And there are so many ways. I we spoke to Ralph Pina from, um, from the Maï Theatre. He says, I'm gonna rebuild my little theatre into a TV studio. So for the next year, we can do something. So where do you see things will be going? And is something up in the air what you guys are participating in, in experimenting? Um, I will, I'll just say I'll just say that MBT, um, and because he's one of the commission artists, woo! Um, so <laughs> MBT, in the spirit of what's happening with the election, um, is actually uh, commissioning Black women artists from trans to cis to non-binary, um, Black women artists to um, create PSAs for the election, um, artistic, creative responses um, to prepare our community um, to really know what's happening with the election. Um, it's using Shirley Chisholm's um, infamous quote, um, um, unbossed and unbought, um, and utilizing that kinetic, uh, reclaiming our vote, that's the name of the series. Um, and we'll be announcing it, it'll be, well, I'm announcing, I guess now, but uh, <laughs> I'm not fully announcing it, but that's how we're addressing it. We're addressing it by thinking about what a civic engagement look like. Mm -hmm. um, and how do we give, and how do we actually, and our civic engagement as an institution is not only in how do we create works that have civic duties a part of it, part of its pro uh, properties, but also how do we um, make sure that we hire as many individual independent artists as possible and trying to make sure that we can feed as, um, with the loaves that we have, feed as many people um, with the loaves that we have. Yeah, I think for me, um, I've made a lot of just, um, I also write. I also write in the TV and the film space. So I, I've sort of been taking a break from that. Uh, I've written my first monologue play. Um, I don't know in what context that will be made or produced. Um, it was made to be a play, but it was originally made as a video for the 24 hour plays. And I've now extended that into a full 30 page work. Um, and so, um, I am very much in the headspace of self-production now and going, oh, well, what does this look like now that right now there is no theater? We can just say it. It's mournful. That's what it is. Um, and so it's looking like, well, what? maybe we film it. Um, maybe we do it somewhere and we invite six people to see it and film it. Um, yeah. So now at the moment as a playwright, um, it's figuring out if I feel like producing theater, going back to my roots, which is self-production and yeah. gathering friends and doing something small, but big. Um, yeah. And she's a G at it. Just want to say, just want to uplift <laughs> that this homie right here is a G at self-production. She did this thing called Good Grief. If you don't know about it, check it out. And homie is well-skilled. From mm. Good Grief to now Africa, well-skilled, well-skilled. Thank you. No, I think this is this is uh, important advice to also to focus on healing, um, to have discussions around plays, to really think through what our audience is leaving with. Does it has to happen, you know, in their space, or can it be um, outside? And as you say, get together with a small group of friends, and you produce something small, back in a big way. Perhaps this will be the thing. There will be small productions. Oh, everyone who loves theater, we love the closeness. Of small spaces, you know, people, theater makers like Rotowski never wanted to have more than thirty people in a room anyway. When yeah. He came to New York, they said, "Come to Carnegie Hall. You are such a success." He said, "You don't understand." Yeah. What my theater is about. It's not possible. They let me. So many people would come and see it, and he said, "No, this is not possible." So he had to find something. I think Peter Brook helped him to mm. to um, to to find it. And um, do you think? Given the situation now, do you have a feel things will change? Do you think this, what's happened now that George Floyd, the murder people out, is this a moment 
as they say in America, the tipping point, do you feel this is a moment of real change? I, I wanna use the lovely thing that Ngozi said. Um, it's a, a moment of real awakening. Um, I think there's an awakening that's happening and the awakening um, creates change, then yes, I think that there is a moment is a moment of change. What is real? I think I, I challenge that word of what real mm -hmm. change means when you say real change. Um, I different. Think, yeah. Well, no, no, no. I just, I, I only, mm -hmm. only, cha I only challenge that because that's a moniker of, in my personal, from my vantage point of like, when we say black excellence, well, why, why does someone have to be black excellence? Why can't they just be black? Like what, what, why do we have to put on this other very taxing layer called excellent? And why do we have to put on this very taxing layer called real? Cause real is for, is, is all objective to be very honest, what you consider real change is different from what I might consider yeah. real change. And so then therefore we never actually create change because we're trying to figure out what real is versus saying, let's just change. And whatever the degree of change that you do creates an awakening and that awakening is what is necessary for your progress and, and ultimately what will help to support my progress. And I, think that, and I think that we as a society just have to be very careful in this moment of like having the conversation that, um, uh, because it, it, I, I think a lot of people are starting to realize how burning the building has been, how mm. on fire the building has been, because mm -hmm. it's always been on fire. But now people are starting to realize, oh, this shit is really on fire. And it's like, no, nah, mm. it's always been on fire. You just had privilege to be further away from the flames. And mm. you considered it to be like a, like a, like a fireplace fire, <laughs> while other communities were actually in that fireplace burning. So like, so, so like mm. you, you're just having a different degree to, to, the, to, the, mm. to the embers, the flames that are, around, that are happening right now. And so I just think that as we, as we march, as we move forward, as we navigate through a space of moving forward in this society, I just think that we have to really um, check and have a conversation with um, how are we um, demonstrating and appropriating um, still uh, Western slash white supremacist language inside of how we document where progress looks like, how progress looks. And so when we say something like real change or we say like black excellence, um, we, are, we are saying that it has to live beyond its, its essence of breathing, its essence of being in order to be considered uh, propped up as something of value when that value is latent in, its ability, in anyone's ability to wake up as what Ngozi said, make the choice to wake up. The choice to wake up is your, it, 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 it's your inherent right to the wealth that this world has to offer. Your choice to, you making that choice to do that. Um, and so uh, I do think this is a moment of awakening and I do think this is a yeah. moment of deep awakening. And I, and I, and I hope, and I, and I think with that awakening for black people, especially um, if we're talking in the art sector, that there's going to be more self-thinking and, and with, that, with that thought of what is good for me, right? What is good for my healing, that there will be they will not allow for themselves to be disrespected when they walk into spaces. Mm. That's my hope. You know, they yeah. will walk into spaces and, and, and they will not compromise themselves for the carrot that is yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever, the, whatever the carrot looks like to them. So I, I do think that there is a shift happening in that. And I think that that will continue because with more people who take themselves into, to, who take their worth into value and take, the, you know, who value themselves, they will walk into spaces wider and they will take up more space and they will not allow for anyone to take, to take their space. They will not allow anyone to hijack their work, right? They won't allow, they will, they will demand um, the care that they need, right? To take care of their work. You know, they will demand that that, is, that, that will be required. If you ask for a black artist to be in your space, they hopefully that black artist will now demand that they be taken care of. And if that PWI does not know how to take care of that space, mm. they will hopefully take some space back. They will hopefully move back and provide people who can actually take up, you know, who can actually hold space for that black artist. That's that's the that's the need, the hope, the demand that I have for you know, these institutions moving forward, you know, that if this is about care, not just for the audience, but for the artist, in what way are you, are, are all of us, if we are all institutions, yes. in what way are we being best citizens, right? If you take in a black artist, how are you being the best 
citizen for that artist. It's your job, as Jonathan was saying, to be imperialistically giving your notes on things that you don't understand. Or is your, is your, is your job now to provide the best Black artists for that, are or the best artists, whatever the, you know that that are always thinking about care to create space for that artist. Is that artist now walking in and knowing what that that what they deserve, what they are owed, what they demand, what they what they need? You know, with this, with, with thinking of the globe, if, if if theater is the microcosm for the world, is this black artist now going? How can I walk into the space so that I am taken care of? Yeah. yeah. So that I can now take care of the audience and take care of other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, 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 and how, and how do I know that I am worth something, that I am valued, that my work is worth something, that it will cause this butterfly effect, right? This ripple, right? If we're going to circle back to everyone's language, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. How can I, how can I start from here and then, and know that my play is important for the moment my play is the thing, you know, and, and have it not be about the New York Times quite frankly, and all those things. Like how do, how does that now, you know, how do reviews change? I don't think that will, I don't think they will, but you know. No, I think it will. I <laughs> think it actually will. will right? with the, with yeah, the, with how the do firing. reviews change? How do, how do yeah. we talk about, how does that, how do we talk about this now? How do we yeah. talk about what we're doing yeah. now? How do we, how can you go back to yeah. how you talked about yes. plays after the time that we're in? Shame on you, good yes. luck. Yes. Good luck going back to the old way. Because yeah. you will feel like you will look like a fossil. Yeah. You, it is a thing of old now, right? It's a thing of old. And so I'm excited for Agreed. this thing that I have not yet imagined what it looks like. I'm not, I've not yet imagined what this play looks like, the first play that goes up in New York or whatever. We, I'm not, I've not yet imagined, even if it's an, an old play, yeah. I've not yet imagined how that artistic practice now will, will, will hold in this, in this new world. But I'm excited. Yeah, and if one listens, I don't know if you saw that uh, Griffin Matthews uh, uh, Instagram post on the Broadway's racist and his mm -hmm. or more or less open attack on Diane Paulus gives you an idea um, and how that feels like. And we're coming close up to the end again. Really, really thank you for sharing and in that raw moment where we all are in. Um, what advice do you give to artists, um, maybe emerging artists, but also fellow artists in the times of, uh, of the street protests, in the times of Corona, and uh, times of an intolerable uh, uh, president, uh, in times of this high unemployment? Where, where does art come in, and what can and should artists do? What do we have to focus on now in this time? We, which so is I, I, well, I, I just want to say, I just want to say that um, to all artists. Um, your art never stopped. Um, art was never, was never, was never, was never anything that stopped. Culture never stopped in the midst of this pandemic. Culture just had a different conversation with how it creates itself, how it expresses itself. But artists have been laboring and telling the ground while many other elements of our society have put a pause on how they operate. Um, so to artists, I want to say um, with deep compassion, thank you. Um, thank you for not stopping, for saying yes when an invitation came out, saying yes uh, to, to, um, to supporting uh, the, the communication that we as institution holders can have with our community. Um, and I would just say that hold as much as you, hold us accountable as institution holders to making sure that we take care of you as the best we possibly can. Whatever that means, however we can do it, I think it's very important that as we, as um, especially in New York City, as we think about what recovery looks like, what reopening looks like, um, we have a deep conversation about how do we ensure the, the, the foundation, ensure the foundation for um, artists, particularly black artists, to be able to stay inside the city if they so choose, if they want to, and also be able to do their work from a space of equitable, equitable practice and um, and compensation, uh, uh, understanding understanding that the system has been broken and the system hasn't actually allowed for people to feel, to be fully taken care of. Uh, what does it mean now to re reimagine it? Um, so my first thing is to say thank you to all artists, individual and a part of administration, but thank you to all artists for 
um, continuing to build culture and to address mm -hmm. culture, even in a time when we were asked not to do anything, you still created and created a resilient re uh, a repository of innovation. So thank you. And to hold us accountable, hold us as institution builders, hold us as, as a community accountable for the ways in which that we will need to be a part of your healing, <clears throat> but also ability for you to express. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I just, I wanna say fellow artists, right? Um, put everyone's feet to the fire. Um, but while we're putting our feet to the fire, we also have to think about what it is that we actually want and what it is that we're actually doing. You had brought out Griffin Matthews. And so I just wanna say that, that I wanna not defend, but I wanna clarify that that was not about an open attack on Diana Paulus. I want to be clear that this was also talking about Kevin McCollum, who was a producer, second stage, which is the producing body and the institution, that it was an open attack on the way that artists cannot really collaborate within a commercial space. Mm -hmm. And the way that artists have to constantly submit to the hierarchical white supremacy, white supremacy standard. I want to be really clear about that. And so I really want to talk to us as artists that when we say yes, what is it, what are we saying yes to? right? Producers, you have to start thinking about yourselves as artists as well. Second stage, you are, you are a producing body. Directors, you are, you are producing and you, are, you have a responsibility as well. If we are truly collaborators in this, hey. right? If we are try, tr truly trying to all make this play, this show, this musical happen, right? Whether the, if, even if the goal is just freaking money, <laughs> right? How are we collaborating to really make this happen, right? He was calling out the institution, you know, I, and I want to be clear that and I want to make sure that Diana Paula as, as the woman is not just a scapegoat for that event. Yes. Right. That is a microcosm of the problem with commercial theater. Right. It's so easy really to name a scapegoat and it's easy to name a scapegoat. To name a scapegoat and, and, and use her as that. But there are multiple in, like, but he mentioned multiple infractions and multiple people and the institution that held up that allowed for that to happen. Right, and there are multiple institutions and multiple people that are allowing this to happen for a black artist to enter into a space that that allows them to compromise their entire work and have mm. to take it back. Mm. And some people don't even get their art back. Mm. Right, some people don't even get to be in this space to have that even confrontation. Mm. Right, because be, because they have to. You know, there there are artists, there are there are theater artists and black artists today who have always been calling out people who have always been holding people accountable, who are blacklisted, right? So I also want us to reach back to some of those artists so that we realize there are, there are the Colin Kaepernick's of theater who we no longer work with in the New York <laughs> space. Yes, <laughs> yes, right? yes. And so I, 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 I want us to also go back and call back those directors and those playwrights and those actors and go, you were right. And you what know? does and call, and what, and what is reconciliation? So what does that reconciliation like look like? Yes. Right. And so I, I, for me, it's like I want us to remember that there have been people fighting for us since before we knew that fighting was OK. Yes. Right. So now that fighting is cute, now that fighting is getting you in a play, a playbill article. Right. I want us to reach back to the people and be like, oh, and this person, too. So I want us to also be holding ourselves accountable before you call out that person. Or after you call out that person. Either or. Either or, you gotta do what you gotta do. What, are, what uh, I want us to think about what it is that we really want, what it is that we're really doing. Mm. Always, and what system, always. And, and, yeah. also, and also what system are we actually participating in? Because I think, yeah. I think that you brought up a really great point about the system and that the system mm -hmm. that we're participating in, and then this is even for anyone who's a part of the nonprofit structure, you're talking about a system that was built off of excess wealth from slavery. Like you're talking about a system that is steeped out of excess wealth. And the excess wealth, found, the foundation of the excess wealth came from slavery. And so, and, so, and so when we talk about what we're participating in, when we talk about, and then what does it mean to create an oasis inside of that system? What does it mean to be knowledgeable about how, you're, how that system needs to be utilized for your benefit and for your good and versus you just saying yes to every opportunity that comes your way? To your point, Ngozi, having the knowledge of like what, is, what, what does it actually mean to participate 
and what does participation look like? And then holding people accountable to what does it mean to say, to what does it mean to, for my yes to be at the table? For my yes mm -hmm. to be at the table, this is what it means because this is the kind of um, reconciliation, reparations, this is the kind of articulation that needs to happen for my healing, which I believe all art can be and is, to be at the center. Yeah, yeah. This, is, uh, this, is, this, is, this is important and lots and lots, lots to think about and to think about that there is a system. So much right now in our time is create an app, go to therapy, uh, go to the fitness studio, make your life better. But there are systems we live in, there are structures and there are forms uh, over centuries. And um, I think uh, the Corona crisis exposed also in different countries, mm -hmm. the artists we speak with, there are better ways to deal with things and there are worse ways. And it depends on by the government, by the people who represent us. But there's also a way how art is produced and uh, there are also ways to produce great art. And it seems to be that uh, uh, um, uh, ways where artists are also in charge, where they are uh, making decisions and uh, it's not mm. part of a commercial structure or board members just who often don't even meet artists in institutions where they are, um, that there are ways to produce art that really serve the community and that we need to have an access to healthcare, education, and the arts, and how that is matters. So really, uh, thank you. I think I know it's a, a, a moment in time we could talk much more we should. It's a, a big conversation, as you pointed out, actually a very long one that has been there for centuries and um, that we are taking uh, the work up from our ancestors or people who, as you say, before us, and that uh, to participate in democracy and in, in art uh, is a participatory engagement, a social engagement. We really have to do that. We are not consumers. So I really would like to thank both of you for, 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 for sharing that moment. Tomorrow we have James uh, Scruggs and Tamila Woodard. I'm sure you know. Yes, uh, we do. Both of them, yeah. Uh, on Wednesday, we have a philosopher here, Jean-Luc Mancy, who is scheduled before from France, uh, who has thought about you also a lot about public space, the we and I, things you talked about, and also what is art for? Why do we need art? And I think, as you said, if we don't need it now, when do we need it ever? I do believe it has to make, and it always made a great, great uh, contribution in the complex history and the fight for freedom and, and liberties. And Nigel Smith can be. Um, with us um, this uh, uh, this week, uh, and so we have Avoye Timpo uh, with us, a great New York director, and also Avoye is my collaborator. Yes. Yes. My collaborator. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, Woody King is with us, who over fifty years has tried to run a theater. A black theater. He's the king. Woody and king. Uh, to hear from him, what does that mean? How does he see where we are now? And uh, I think this will be an important um, week of listening and discussing. Again, thank you, thank you both for um, sharing and for taking the time and listening to us. Thank you for HowlRound, for Thea and Vijay and Travis for, for being with us and my team, Andy and Sanyang for making this happen. So I'm really, a lot of things to think about. So really thank you for sharing. And uh, this is an ongoing um, discussion and uh, Jonathan, I hope you will be also back to the Seagull um, soon and uh, we'll see, so hope to, to meet you too. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, really appreciate it.